Russ, we saw the news about Trevor Moet. Obviously, you were very close to him. Um, how has that hit you? Um, yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> this may be tough for me to talk about, but I, um, I, I think about the first time I met Trevor. I was a um, I was a kid coming from Wisconsin, and uh, I was I was knocking on the doors of IMG trying to get in. You know, I was ready to get ready for um, training, and uh, you had all these great players down there and everything else. And and uh, <clears throat> you know, he's the first guy I meet. And uh, I go in, we go into his office and me and him sit down. And he <clears throat> he goes, you know what I hear about you? And I said, what's that, Trip? He goes, uh, I hear you're going to be great. I said, yeah, I'm going to be great. He goes, you know why? I said, I know why. He goes, and I said, do you know why? <laughs> I asked him. And he goes, yeah, I know why. Your mind. Your mind. That's what's going to separate Russell Wilson. That's what we're going to work on. And so from that moment um, ever since, you know, he's been my best friend. You know, we spent so much time together. Um, do the highest, highest, highest of the highest moments to some of the lowest moments, um, you know, um, to the moments of winning the Super Bowl, uh, to the moment not winning it, unfortunately. Um, he was always, he's always been there for me, you know. He's a guy who always gave me perspective and gave me knowledge and insight. And um, when we didn't win, I went down to San Diego and he, and, uh, he called me um, that night or the, night, the next morning. And, uh, <clears throat> At the Super Bowl, we didn't win, and and uh, he said, "How you doing?" I said, <clears throat> "I said, you know, the sun still comes up in the morning, Trev. The sun still comes up in the morning." And uh, he said back to me, "He said, you're a winner. You're a winner. I believe in Russell Wilson. I believe in number three. What are we gonna do about it?" And uh, so I said, I'm ready. When we starting, I'm ready right now. So I hopped on a plane, flew down to San Diego, and uh, and uh, he kind of, you know, moved in with me for about a month just to just to keep everybody away and just to have everything move efficiently and everything else. And uh, got to work that day, that next mo that next morning. And the one thing that we talked about in, in those moments, you know, in, in that moment in particular. We sat in the kitchen, a little circle table in San Diego. He, he, he said to me, um, he said to me that, you know, we have a choice to make. I said, I've already made it. So you've already made it? I said, I've already made it. I'm not going to let this moment affect me for the rest of my career. <laughs> not me. They got the wrong one. I said, good. That's what I thought you were going to say. And so when I think about my relationship with Trevor, um, I think about a man who was humble. I think about a man who always served, who always gave back, who was always dedicated to working and helping everyone. And everybody he helped, it seemed that they always got better. They always got better. He was a winner. He was a guy who always gave back and knew how to win championships and knew how to help people win. And um, not just in, on the field, but in their personal lives too, you know. And um, there's a few things that Trevor always mentioned to me that I will, I will always remember and I still will always use and always think about when I think about them. He said a few things to me, simple wins, simple wins. And it doesn't, we don't have to make our lives more chaotic than, than they have to be. It's like one of the second things he used to always say to me is, you don't have to be sick to get better. Everybody waits to be sick to get better. Why don't we always? Why don't we improve our minds? Why don't we work at it? Why don't we? Why don't we think about it? Why don't we? Why don't we try to help others and always constantly get better? Uh, one of the other things he used to always say to me, too, that always hit me, and I really believe this, is that too many people. It's not that they. <clears throat> it's not that they aim too high. It's that they aim too low and miss, and hit. Actually, he said, yeah, they aim too low and hit. And when I think about that, I think about, you know, having big goals and having big dreams and all the, all the things I've ever wanted to do. Um, we aligned in that sense. And he was a winner. He was a giant, mental giant. 
you know, in such a cool, cool, cool way. And um, <clears throat> what I realize about life is that it's always going to change. The one thing I've noticed in my 10 years of playing in the National Football League, whether it's professionally, um, you know, relationally, spiritually, um, it always changes. And we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make it. And how are we going to go about that? And how are we going to think about that? And how are we going to love through it all? And how are we going to forgive through it all? And how are we going to continue to win through it all? And so we have a choice to make. And I think that a lot of people have been going through so much. Um, and um, I think about all the people that have gone through COVID, have lost people and family members and loved ones. Um, all the people who have experienced cancer like Trevor had, you know, he hit it, you know, in the sense that he just didn't want to affect other people. He didn't want to make people feel bad for him or sorry for him, you know. He, and uh, I told Trevor, man, people love you, man, you know. And so I think about um, we've all gone through different circumstances and we'll all go through challenges and changes and things. Um, but the one thing that Trevor used to always say to me, he'd say, Russ, a few things. Number one, I believe in Russell Wilson. I believe in three. And number two, the best is ahead. And so when I think about what I want to do and part of my life mission and what I want to really want to be able to impact, and I've been doing it you know, over the past several years, but with Limitless Minds and what we've been doing in terms of, that was a passion thing that Trevor really cared about. You know, and, and um, the brother Harry, the CEO and DJ, um, and, you know, last night I was, I was praying as he, as he was um, passed away and everything else. So, you know, I was talking to C and my brother and my brother and them were down there and um, I couldn't go, obviously. But I, it was <clears throat> it was that, man, like people, people need us to be able to help their mindset. And what Trevor always talked about was neutrality, you know, being neutral, being a neutral thinker, you know, that there's things going to be that the highest of the highs and lowest of the lows. But to be able to remain consistent through it all and be able to keep your mind clear and know what you're saying and, and controlling your language and, and how you go about life and attitudes, everything and all those different things. Um, it's important to me, you know, that I can help, you know, kids all over the country, all over the world and how they think and how, what their mindset's like. So that's, that's my, that's my mission, you know, and, um, so anybody who wants to join me, I'm on it, you know, and so, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to doing it with my brother and, and DJ and, and uh, to be able to go on that journey. Um, but what I'll say about Trev, though, the last thing I'll say is, is that, um, you know, Trev, I thank you, you know, I thank you. I, I, uh, I wish I could talk to you again, um, but, you know, I'll see you again. I'll see you again. The best is ahead. Go Hawks. <clears throat>